Hey guys, uh, welcome to Civil Line Nation. And I have um, a guest that I'm really excited about. Um, and um, hold on, let me get Sarah Nicole on here. Let me add her. And. Hopefully you guys are doing okay today. Let me see, can I add her? There she is, view, request view. Go to live with, go to live. Can you hear me? I can hear you, girl. Okay, I hear you too now. <laughs> And for some reason, I couldn't hear you no, for a minute. I told you we would figure it out, right? Yes. I can't see you, though. You can't see me? No. I know. How weird. Let me see. Let's see what I... No requests. I can see you. Okay. But you see... Oh. Can you see yourself also? You can see me, too. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see why you can't see me. I know. It's okay. Yeah, you wouldn't. I probably didn't so, see guys, something uh, right. This is Sarah Nicole. Yeah. And I met her on, on Instagram. I follow her a lot. And wow, she's fun. That's And, and we just got through chatting and we have so much in common. Uh, one of the things that we have in common is that we both do a 12-step program. And mm -hmm. I was really excited to hear about that. And Nicole has been sober. Nicole, let me let you tell the guests how long you've been sober. Okay. okay. Well, I prefer to talk about my sobriety, my, my actual sobriety date as when I started. So that would be July 7th, 2017. And I have relapsed, unfortunately, a couple of times um, since then. But uh, the more I talk with other people who are in sobriety and just the acceptance of myself, relapse is just a part of the journey. It is, mm -hmm. you know, there's some people yes. who are blessed or I, I don't even want to say blessed because I'm still God has always been there with me. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some people who have been able to get sober initially and then, you know, they hold on to it but mm -hmm. there's i've got complex post-traumatic stress disorder and so when traumas or triggers come up for me um it's incredibly difficult for me to be able to uh process a lot of that stuff and yeah yeah drinking for me that was my doc alcohol was i i, I if i could have found a pill the, to take to uh -huh. feel that way <laughs> you're, you're I, taking the that pill. Was, I've been taking the bell. Yes. So my um currently I've been sober now for five months. Actually, tomorrow will be my five month. Congratulations. Yes. yes. So I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> and you should be. You should be. Thank you. I I was looking at um I love where we were talking earlier and mm -hmm. you were saying that, you know, the main thing is you're looking for a home group and I, I love that because um that really helps me you know mm -hmm. to have that support and yes. that's really important um another thing that i i like about what you're saying like i told you i follow you and i i look at your yeah. stuff one thing that i that really hit home with me you talked about the generation curses mm -hmm. and i was like you know what I can identify with that. And you talked about um, how religion, organized religion, um, had a big part in that generational curses. Um, yeah. Are you comfortable yeah. with uh, speaking on um, what oh, yeah. you mean about that? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I will... There's so much to say on that topic mm -hmm. of uh, organized religion and then generational curses. You know, like, mm -hmm. granted, they're two, two different things, but I do see how organized religion um, has made it more 
acceptable to be a dysfunctional family to not seek out uh, therapy and healing and stuff like that. And now, mind you, I had grown up Catholic and I, God pulled me out of the church back in 2019. I was leading worship and it was like, God, I, I, so I sing um, as well. And so mm -hmm. it was like, I, I'll never forget how he had already told me, you know, it's time for you to leave. And I had grown, so I'm sorry, I grew up Catholic and then, mm -hmm. um, when I moved out of my parents' home when I was 18, that I had stopped going to church, I always had a relationship personally with God. I will remember always crying out to him as a child and in my uh, teen years and things like that. But growing up Catholic, it was like, um, it was, it was like forbidden that you talk to God without a priest and that you had mm -hmm. to pray specific prayers to be forgiven. You know, all of these these things that were now that I, now I see, and I know that were separating me from God, honestly, because it was, it, it was a, a hindrance and it was a blockage. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I, I've been through many denominations of churches from Baptist to, uh, just the modern Christian, then the evangelistic type. And, um, and I've been on ministries in all of those churches and I've always thought like, okay, where do I find like my church home? And like, you mm -hmm. know, God kept moving me around. And, um, when I became a single mother back in 2009, that was incredibly difficult for me because then you've got the gossipers and, mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. though I was on ministry, n there, you know, you talk about shepherding a church, and it's unfortunate that nowadays a lot of our congregations do not have pastors who mm -hmm. are are shepherding the church. They don't know even a lot of their members, um, and and mind you, there may be some. I'm not, you know, I haven't attended every church mm -hmm. in the entire world, but the you know the majority of churches that we have access to, I have not encountered a safe space and definitely mm -hmm. not a safe space to talk about my addiction or yeah. you know things like that that i was going through and you know then at one my son has special needs there was times where mm -hmm. people would tell me well you just need to pray it out of him <laughs> or <laughs> okay you know or that yeah. i'm not faithful enough because i'm mm -hmm. i'm struggling mentally or i'm I'm having a very difficult time with my trauma and the organized religion really made me feel like God intended for things. And I, I don't, I don't know how to put this into words exactly. And until you've been through some really traumatic events, whether that be the generational curses um, and traumas that just keep passing along and getting stronger and worse, or just even things that happen within society, you know, um, like you know, being raped or attacked mm -hmm. or you know things of that nature. Um, yes. But it, it like when I, I was raped, I was told, "Well, God wanted that to happen to you." Wow. And I, I'm and like, "Who would say something like that?" You know? Right. Yeah. So it's, wow. You know, that's where you know, like, granted, it's two different things, but you know, those generational curses because we have congregations that are maybe more focused on how many members do I have and how much are you tithing and this and this mm -hmm. and this and not yes. eating the word correctly that that allows those generational curses to mm -hmm. continue and to get mm -hmm. stronger you know mm -hmm. so yes. it's uh, church hurt is, is real and it's yeah. ironic to, to me that members of the church cannot talk about it or even those mm -hmm. outside of the church because mm -hmm. those outside of the church are hurt by the church right, right. <laughs> that we they can't talk about it but a pastor will get up and have a whole sermon about how he's heard yes. about how the congregation did whatever yeah. they have, you know what i mean <laughs> but I, I think with me when it came to the organized religion mm -hmm. you know i i would go they would call you to the uh you can call go and and pray you know how they tell you yeah, to come up call front? Mm -hmm. and, and I would go and I would pray and I would ask for relief from uh, drugging and drinking. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had to learn that there's things in the church that I, I could get in the 12 steps, but I couldn't get at church because right. these people understood the pain. Yes. 
And even although the the church people, you know, I've lately learned that there are certain things I can take from them and there's certain things that I have to leave there. Right. Does that make sense what I'm yeah. saying? Absolutely. And I I was putting them on a pedestal. Goodness, I'm still here. <laughs> Yeah, I was putting them on a pedestal, and I was uh, expecting them to be these great people with all the knowledge, the all-knowing. Yes. And, yeah, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And when I came into the 12-step program, these people were saying, you know, they were using God and the word F and damn and all this stuff, and it was like, yeah. oh, why well, I like it here? You know? <laughs> right. These are my people. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to be struck down because I said F word in God in the same sentence, right? right? So right. I thought this is a pretty good, cool place to be <laughs> at. But I learned that I was putting them on a pedestal. And that was my doing mm -hmm. because that's how I was raised that right. if you even thought something bad about God, he's going to strike you down. Yes. Right. So I had to really learn what my higher power or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I had to relearn and recreate it. Does right. that make sense? Yes. Yeah. But so much so. It, yeah. Yeah. Because that then it, it, it no longer worked for me. And a lot of their teachings, I think, like you said, are generational. Mm -hmm. But nobody asked. Well, why are we doing this? Why are we thinking like this? Why is this like this? Because if you ask, you weren't supposed to. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the less, that's what I got out of it. You just mm -hmm. do it because we tell you, right? And right. That, that, that stop working. Yeah, that no, no longer yeah. work. No. And it does, and that's the thing is when when you are, and I don't, I don't think that anybody goes into religion necessarily to like, use it i think that there's you know obviously we all have try i truly believe we've all got some level of trauma we all need healing mm -hmm. right yes. and so we are yes. gonna go it's just like when you go to the doctor you know mm -hmm. you're gonna expect that i'm going to somebody who's gonna help me right yes. like yes and so i don't know that it's you know it's a it's a conscious thing necessarily that we you know are putting people on the pedestal in a sense but we are expecting to we there mm -hmm. are expectations and now it is yes. biblical that if you are pastoring a church and you are in ministry that you have an, an enormous responsibility mm -hmm. you know and so that mm -hmm. can't be taken lightly and yes. you know the more i I poured myself into my Bible. I would read my Bible. I would pray. I would talk to God. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. like how we're talking right now, I would be yeah. like, God, why? You know, I, I remember one time I was driving and I was having an issue with my brother and I was just like, oh God, what do I need to say to them? And, uh, you know, what, what are this uh, and this and this, you know, and I don't understand. And God was like, well, they hear me just as clearly as you do. It's up to them mm -hmm. what they do with. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to fix it, you know? And yes. when, when you start to read the Bible, I, I really see how a lot of people are almost trapped in the Old Testament because if you really truly know the gospel and you read the New Testament, there's mm -hmm. no way that we would be behaving the way that we are as, you know, so-called Christians. I honestly have a really difficult time with calling myself a Christian. I'm just a yeah. follower of God. You know, yes. I'm a believer. And, and, and I that's like it. that. Yeah. I like that. That's just for me and in the 12 steps, this is like me telling you I've been cured of this disease. <laughs> right. It's no, it's no cure, you no. know. And that's, you know, and we, we can be calm. And I, I try to be real careful in the program, mm -hmm. in the 12 step pro program, that I don't become where I think I know everything. Yes. Where I I because I've got a little time now I can tell you no I can't I can only share with you my experience right and what I do to stay sober but I I like to op to have an open mind so I can continue to learn yeah. you know yes. and I, I think when you have the different levels of mm -hmm. people in, in the organization yeah. Yeah. where you got you know the different hierarchies so to speak that's what happens it you know does 
because like we we all have different journeys and i think mm -hmm. that that's probably you know like the word so like one of my quotes is the worst thing that you can expect from another is for them to be like you like we were mm -hmm. all created mm -hmm. to be unique right we all have different yes. journeys now we're all human we all want healing we all need you know these basic um we have basic needs that are uh very you know like we need air water food yes. you know things yes. of that nature. we all need love we we all of that but mm -hmm. we all have different journeys and so Yes. Um, we have talked about this before too. What may work for me mm -hmm. may mm -hmm. not work for, for somebody else. And yes. maybe it'll work for them in the future. It might not. When I initially mm -hmm. got sober, I was so traumatized and had not been able to process and deal with my trauma that I didn't mm -hmm. trust anybody, mm -hmm. but I knew mm -hmm. I needed to get sober. And so I uh -huh. did it cold turkey. I did it on my own and it was just uh -huh. me and God. I had no medication at yeah. that time. I'm on medication now, which is so helpful. Oh. And that's another so, thing with organized religion is, uh -huh. you know, why you don't need yeah. a counselor, you need Jesus. You don't need medication, mm -hmm. you need to yeah. pray it away. Yeah. And that really is yeah. why I think God put me out on a platform or like he pushed me to, cause I honestly did not want an Instagram, I didn't want any of this public really? stuff. I really did not. Back in 2000, I had already started writing back in 2011, but I wasn't, um, you know, like the public face of it. Yes. And in 2015, he was like, I want you more public. Create an Instagram. Uh -huh. create. And I was like, awesome. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> And he did. And the whole purpose really, as as I've evolved over this, was just that he wants me to like untangle the mess of what we think God is. Mm -hmm. And he is mm -hmm. not organized religion. If he was, he mm -hmm. would never have sent Jesus. We'll just mm -hmm. put it that way, mm -hmm. right? you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I think, uh, um, I love what I'm hearing from you. It's when you're on a journey and it's someplace that you're meant to go and he wants you to do it. There's nobody or uh, nothing that can hold it back. And mm -hmm. I truly believe that, you know, it's with civil Lining nation. Mm -hmm. I, I still fear. I still get scared, but my, mm -hmm. it's less. Does yes. that make sense? 100%. It's less. And it's like, I ask myself, what's the worst thing that can happen? And you and I talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. The people that are supposed to receive it will receive the message. Right. Those that it's not meant for, then they'll just pass it by. Right. But I, I, I don't fear when I'm on here anymore. Mm -hmm. If I don't say something that's meant for someone to hear, then that it's just not meant for them. That's how I see it. But. I I want to do the work and I want yeah. to do it to the best of my ability. And right. I think once that happens, then I can leave it alone. That's me taking the actions. Yes. You know, I could because well, you know God never leaves us alone, right? And yes. especially if He's asked us to do something, He mm -hmm. I mean He He'll be waiting, like you know, yeah. I told you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll constantly be that like pressing on your heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, and then it, things just fall into place. They you do. know when it's right, right, it just falls into place. I I, I call it playing tug of war, like you have a dog and you got the rope and you're pulling and he's pulling, and yeah. once you let it go, you think, why was I trying to hold on to that? It was so easy to let it go, right? You know, and right. let him have it. But sometimes I can get stubborn and get stuck in my head and think I have all the answers. And yeah. That is a horrible place for me to be at. It is. But at the same token, he already knows that you are like this. Like he knows you better yeah. than you even know yourself, uh -huh. right? And so yes. in that, even in that stubbornness or those things uh -huh. that we go through, that is, uh, that's a part of like, like if you look at that as like a trial and then a testimony, right? So. Uh -huh my yes. stubbornness and looking at all of that then now after i've gotten through it i was like oh lord i should have just uh you know rested in you on this right yes and he uh -huh. already knows 
that but then it also starts to strengthen you spiritually and it's the same yes. thing when you're talking about coming on with the fear it's the mm -hmm. the more that we start to walk through the things in our lives and our feelings mm -hmm. and experience them then we we learn from them yes. you know yeah because i i don't learn if if it's not if i'm not going through something i'm not learning anything if it's easy i'm floating through life yeah yeah so in order for me to learn i've got to lean in and i've got to go through it yeah in order to get through it i gotta go through it and i i have to remember to tell myself that you know what it's just a feeling and it's gonna pass right and sometimes that's that's not the easiest it's easier said than done but i know that i'm going to get through it once i get through it i have a testimony that i can share with someone else how i made it through right and that's the beauty part i think of uh, recovery you know to uh yeah. share this thing you know it's like wow yeah you know we have this um we we're, since we are religion yeah <laughs> i was i was raised baptist okay and you were raised catholic right mm -hmm. so in the baptist community we it's like if the lord brings you out and he gives you something you shout it from the rooftop yeah you tell everybody that he's delivered you right yes. well i come into the 12-step program and guess what they say <laughs> keep it to yourself keep it to yourself and that kind of bothered me yes what's your feeling on that i you know i don't how can i explain this i noticed with myself when i was starting to break patterns of um things that i was doing or experiencing and things like that i noticed mm -hmm. that i was easily swayed by uh, um by others so whether that be mm -hmm. Uh, television, you know, like I just was always like, oh, I, they're, they're doing it better than I am. So mm -hmm. I need to be exactly like them. Right. Uh, so that kind of a mm -hmm. mindset. And so um, about maybe my goodness, probably about around the time when I got pregnant with my son is when I really started to break some of these paths. Or no, it was a little bit before that because I had tried to get sober, not intentionally, but I just had started to pull myself away from um the people i was partying with and things like that but mm -hmm. i i noticed that what i was surrounded by and, and now granted this is like with everybody you know whatever you're going to feed yourself whether it be through your eyes or your mm -hmm. ears or your mouth you become mm -hmm. that you know? so the company that you keep it yeah. does matter but i because it's of right. my, the generate yeah. right so the generational trauma that i had i i was just wired to be a people pleaser i mm -hmm. it was my fault if i did something mm -hmm. wrong it, yeah it, it, you know what i'm saying yeah. like i i think you could probably yeah, I did it. Where I'm going with this. yeah <laughs> so i was constantly seeking guidance even as an adult not consciously and so mm -hmm. i'm careful to where you know like who i surround myself with and mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. and, and things that i involve myself with because it's very you know it's a slow fade there's a you know, there's a song like that and it's so true because you don't necessarily know when you are being manipulated whether it be mm -hmm. by a person a church a job you uh -huh. know a, it could be even like a recovery group and when we're mm -hmm. in recovery especially initially it's very we're, we're like brand new fresh babies uh -huh. You know what uh, I mean? And yeah. so learning mm -hmm. a lot of things about yourself. I think what works for you is what works for you. If you are so proud mm -hmm. of your recovery and you want to mm -hmm. tell everybody, tell everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, it doesn't, it's a really about, recovery is about acceptance of yourself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's about mm -hmm. accepting what has happened and where you're at and, you mm -hmm. know, and, and where you're going. Yeah. And so if that's what helps you and that, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops and all of the mm -hmm. things, but stay humble in the fact of knowing that I don't know everything, but Keyword. I am proud of myself that yeah. I'm on day three. Yeah. Yes. Keyword humble, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, it's the thing, thing is to, I like to lead, lead by example think you know i like i love that part where we have in the 12 steps let your action prove that there is a change in mm -hmm. you because 
I can remember in the beginning, you know, man, I, I messed, I don't know whether you want to call it messed up or you know how we use the words mm -hmm. a lot of times. And I would say, I'm never doing this again. Right. And my family and friends didn't trust me. So I did have to prove by my action, you right. know what, I've got to shut my mouth and show them by my action right. that I'm trying to change. So yeah. I did get that in early recovery because my sponsor had to tell me, you know, shut up. They don't need to hear that you're going to the 12-step program. What's your uh, reason behind yes. this? Because intention matters. Yes. Yes. What's your re why do you need to tell them that you're doing that? Mm -hmm. And those little things, they it did help me. Mm -hmm. um, however, with my program today, um, I think we were talking about it earlier. I I sure I allow my recovery because I want to be able to share my experience with others yeah. to say this is what I did. It, and this is how I stay sober. And this is the only thing that I can share with you is my experience. And right. that's what I'm trying to do. Not tell you what you ought to be doing. Because, girl, most of the time I don't even know what I ought to be doing. <laughs> but I, I can't tell them what to do. But I can tell you what I do. Yeah. And that's, that's how I try to live today. Right. By leading by example. Yeah. Yeah. And leading there's hope in that. There, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I can't fit in your shoes. You can't fit in my shoes, mm -hmm. but we both have to wear shoes, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. Because I, I, I don't know what took you to get there. You know, it, it might, you might have to go a different journey, but as long as we get there, and that's, that's what's important that right. we get there. And right. every, some people get there different ways. Mm -hmm. Some people, they don't need a 12 step program. I've, I've interviewed a lot of them that didn't, and yeah. they're sober. Right. You know, they're sober because I don't think it's just one way. I think no. it, it's the willingness is what you need to have. That's what I feel, just right. the willingness. Because it talks about it in the real book. It's knocking you. It should be open, seeking you should find. I really believe in those things. And the willingness is like, mm -hmm. Right there, if you say, I, I want to, where it's a crack. And then it'll keep opening wider, right. you know, the longer you stick with it. Right. And I love where you were talking about um, everybody don't stay sober. Can you reiterate more on that? And, and, and because yeah. people need to know, you know, yeah. as long as you come back, that's what's important. It, and right. And there's, you know, it's hard, like, you know, now being on this side of it, you know, when, when you leave uh, your recovery, you don't, uh, you know, everyone will kind of like, oh, here we go again. Right. Like there's not, you know, that, I think that's the most difficult part just about recovery is like the support part. And it's hard uh -huh. to not mm -hmm. have you real I mean, like all of us really just want someone who understands, who yes. gets it and, yes. and like, you know, I mean, cause there's just so much bottled up inside that we don't even know how to like mm -hmm. speak mm -hmm. and say it, you know? And so I, I just lost my train of thought. Ask me that question again so I can get there. To, I want you to evolve right back on everybody. Sometimes we, we relapse. Oh, everybody don't say something. Yeah, yeah I forget. don't relax. Yeah, that's okay, girl. Yeah. We have so much going on up here. I do. It's like I got so many thoughts. <laughs> you know, and then I got, well, so when I had, I had relapsed, a I had relapsed and gotten sober, relapsed and gotten sober, you know, like, like at one point it was three years, then I had like a three month mm -hmm. stint, then I was hiding it again, you know, oh, maybe I can learn how to drink now, you know, yeah. because I was thought like I had to learn, you know, like I just wasn't doing it right. Um, right. But yeah, so the relapse is just a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. It is, it, it's like the most, I think the most comforting thing for me is to know that I may, may relapse in the future, 
Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the reality of my life. I have, mm -hmm. I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. If I experience another significant trauma, I am this, I'm this close. And mm -hmm. sometimes there are triggers that are significant for me that I am just, I'm disassociated in the sense where I don't want to talk to anybody and I'm very secluded. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's, uh, it, it, it creeps up and I have to like fight those things off. I mean, those of mm -hmm. us who are in recovery are like legit warriors, like the stuff that we ba that we battle yeah. mentally and, and physically and spiritually is just, yeah. I mean, it is some hard stuff. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when we relapse, we're already feeling very, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we're already feeling the shame as it is. And so yeah. when others who have been proud of us or whatnot, or, um, yeah. are then shaming us on top of it, 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 gen it, it genuinely makes it even worse. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to be an addict for the rest of my life. But every mm -hmm. single time I've relapsed, it has been so much more difficult to get sober. It is, mm -hmm. it has been harder every single time that I've relapsed to get sober again again. Mm -hmm. And this time I'm just like, I do not, I don't want to go through this again. And I'm yeah. learning more about myself. I'm in therapy every single Sunday for almost mm -hmm. a year now. And awesome. I just know, yeah, I just know that I am not going to, I don't think I'll make it out if I, if I relapse, even yeah. if I take a step, I do not think I'm, I'm it's going to build and it's going to grow just like all addictions do. And uh -huh. it's, I'm, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm scared of relapsing, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. really yeah. scared at this point. I know I can't teach myself to drink. Yeah. I found out one during one of my sober one after one of my relapses that I had undiagnosed ADHD and ADD on mm -hmm. top of having complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's just like, you know, a, a yeah. zoo and a carousel and a, you know, a circus up in there. And uh -huh. I'm like, okay, no wonder why I want to drink because I'm trying uh -huh. to calm myself down. But yeah. the more I learn about myself and the more that I grow, then I understand that, okay, well, I can't, I can't put myself in certain situations because I can't, mm -hmm. I literally cannot handle the stress of it. Right. Right. And this is a right. part, part of like your growth, but at the same token, when I got sober the first time for initially, and I was intentional about it, back in 2017, I learned a heck of a lot of things even back then. So that's why when, you know, it's like, oh, what's your sober date? You know, a lot of people will change their birth date and whatnot. And for me, uh -huh. my hard, my hard birthday sobriety date is seven, seven, 17, because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. been a journey. Yeah. It's not it, just yeah. because I relapsed doesn't mean I have to start completely over, you mm -hmm. know, and it's just one day. It literally is just one day at a time. Like, yes, yes. That's, that's it is. It, because what I what got me what I did to stay sober today is not gonna it's not gonna go in tomorrow. I got right. it every day. Right. You know, every day. It's it's so you're mentioning about the darkness and all that. <laughs> and I'm standing here and I get it. Isn't that weird how we get that, right? Well, and I, I get the shame and I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And I can't, what you just described is what I say in the rooms of recovery. Mm -hmm. I can't say this stuff to anybody else who's not an addict or alcoholic and they know about that yeah. deep, dark ugliness. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Only another addict and an alcoholic understand that language right and and, and and on the same on the flip side that's exactly the reason why somebody who is not an addict should not judge an addict because they don't mm -hmm. understand no it's it's so easy to say which i you just said it you you don't understand right and right. you don't understand for you you can you can get mad at someone and mm -hmm. You're just mad at them. I do not play around with being mad at anyone. I've got to immediately get over it because if I don't, yourself. it would take me out. It would you take know me out. Right. 
And I'm laughing just because that's literally like, I would be like, I'm not going to be angry about it. I'm going to, oh, you know, I'll just let it press out because I'm like, I'm either going to start drinking or I'm going to start yelling. <laughs> I don't try to be angry. I have to immediately, you know, yeah. I've got to get at peace with that. And I've got to find somewhere in the middle to say, so I can come to yeah. in my head to know that that's a child of God. If I can't get there, that shit would take me out, yeah, girl. No. I, it would take me out. And people that don't have this disease don't realize how strong that is. And Resentment I, is a I, number one offender of an addict and an alcoholic. It is. And and I think a lot of, you know, like when we, like to even to go back to where we started with like the generational curses and like organized religion and stuff like that, you know, it's always about like, oh, well, forgive that person, forgive that person, forgive that person. But we mm -hmm. don't, forgiveness is, is the person and you. So what you're mm -hmm. actually, your stuff needs to be addressed too, how you're mm -hmm. feeling and how, it, what you mm -hmm. experienced, yes. right? And so with, yes. with organized religion, a lot of it is just like, oh, just forgive the person, you know, and, and this and this and this and this. But there's opportunity for growth and healing in the fact of mm -hmm. there actually being an, uh, a seeing of what you're going through yes. in that and not yes. ignoring that, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, yeah. you know, sometimes I can't, you know, I may not be able to necessarily, I don't have a resentment for somebody and I may for, I don't know, you know, I told my therapist, I'm like, I really want to explore forgiveness further because i don't know that where i'm at with certain people in my life or certain things that have happened now i've let it go i don't know that i would say like oh if i saw them on the street that i would say hello mm -hmm. but does that mean that i haven't forgiven them i don't know i don't you know it's like i don't know what that means but i think you can appreciate so the one thing i wanted to see if you if you understand this part too but what one of um what i realized goodness this was this is probably last year yeah it was last year and it was after one of my relapses and I was sober again and I woke up one morning and I had I had just started doing the podcast with uh this pink cloud and I had done an interview mm -hmm. with them and I the whole time I was talking about my rapes and I never talk about when I had been raped mm -hmm. I, that is something mm -hmm. that I don't typically talk about I woke up the uh -huh. next morning and I was like I just wanted to drink because I couldn't calm my brain and my body mm -hmm. down from yeah. the overwhelm, right? Yeah. And I realized in that moment that like there were many a times while my alcoholism almost killed me, it mm -hmm. truly had like there was a lot of times where it had saved my life because I have been I I struggle with um suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. at times because of mm -hmm. the trauma that I've experienced and there if i wasn't drinking to like numb my brain and the things mm -hmm. that and my feelings and stuff like that i probably would have done it you know years ago mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know it's, it's an odd thing to say like you know my my addiction saved my life mm -hmm. you know because not many people come out of it and it does do a lot of damage to yeah. your life but there was there was something in those moments where you know while i wasn't making great decisions for myself it was like uh -huh. i was doing what i had to do to survive yeah if that makes sense it's it's called the survival mode right and sometimes um i know in my addiction um uh, i would put myself in unsafe places yeah and i, I knew i shouldn't be there but i i mm. did yeah and i came out okay However, when I got sober, mm -hmm. I was still in that same frame of mind. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it had it took some while being in the program for me to realize, which is uh, it's, it's it's six and seven surrounding mm -hmm. that area. Yeah. My um um character defects, I think six and seven. Anyway. I was holding on to things that I no longer needed to hold on to. My character defects were like my honor, armor, you know, my shield. Does that make sense? Yeah. But yeah. then after I had been in the program, I didn't need to use those shields anymore because I wasn't putting myself into those dangerous positions right. anymore. So yeah. I can let those shields down. 
and let yes. the, those character defects go because it's like being tensed up in the fight mode all the time because all you gotta the time. fight flight brings fun all, yes. all the time yes and when you notice that you're not needing those certain defects character defects yeah. you can let them go right and they gradually go with the help of your higher power yes but it's your body only knows learned behavior right so it's right. so useful to being in that fight mode because you used to put your i used to put myself in those situations so right. it didn't know that i wasn't in those situations anymore I had to let myself know, hey, you're not putting your, you're not in that area, you're not at the crack house. Right. You don't have to have that, that, that fight mode. Yes. Well, and you brought up a great point, though. Your body, like, that is a huge thing that I think, you know, I think now, uh, you know, this day and age, I think we're, there's more information and understanding about how our, our brains and our minds are affected. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like your body and your mind are like, mm -hmm. oh, we must go back there or this might yes. happen again yes. or, or this and this. Yes. And, and that is the reality. It's there's nothing you can pray away about that. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work. So it's like mm -hmm. it's called neural pathways. Mm -hmm. And um if you think about like I'm digging a tunnel, like that's you're literally like re training your brain. Yes. You're literally making new pathways mm -hmm. and that takes yes. time and like significant yes. effort so for you to get to a mm -hmm. point of calming your body down mm -hmm. by knowing that you are not in those situations mm -hmm. and you're telling yourself to open you're literally like retraining your brain yes. so that your body can feel yes. safe but you were doing what you had to do in those mm -hmm. moments too yes. you know like it is a survival mechanism because a lot mm -hmm. of the times we talk you now i think when people are like oh you're you're triggered you know and they say it like in such a nasty way and it's like mm -hmm. yeah i'm triggered because i'm traumatized like right. it's nothing to make light out of or to make fun of like yeah, this? yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like um yeah, yeah i am triggered so can we just have a regular conversation and walk yeah. through this or at least give me some space you know what i mean like just help me get yeah. to the other side you know yeah but and then you mentioned um when you were on Pink Cloud, mm -hmm. that you brought up um, being raped, a rapist incident that had happened to you. I, multiple I, times it happened to me. And then you, you afterwards, you thought about it, and you, you were like, did you feel horrible after the next day that you had mentioned that on the podcast? Yeah. You, you know what my experience with that is? Yeah. It's but you know you know the fifth step, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, like when we work the fifth step, we we reveal everything to our sponsor. Yeah. And I remember when I worked that fifth step, mm -hmm. I I was at a twelve step meeting. Okay. And I'm at the coffee bar. And one of my friends, she comes up and I don't know what I how I was looking, what was going on. She says, Are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm I'm just freaking mad. And I feel <laughs> irritable. And she was like, what step are you on? And I said, step five. And she said, that's where you write down everything, all the stuff. And she um, said, you haven't went over that step with your sponsor yet, have you? And I said, no. She said, the reason you're feeling that way, and I think, and I'm just giving you an example. Yeah. Because you're still setting in that shit. So yeah. It's, you revealed that to them, but you hadn't spoke to someone personally about it. Mm -hmm. So you were setting in it. Does that well, make sense what I'm saying? Yes. And I and honestly, I have. So, you know, as much as society wants to talk about, like, oh, addicts and recovery and, you know, this and this and this but they don't make it easy at all for mm -hmm. us to do so and so when uh -huh. i never had justice there was a lot yeah. of things that had happened and transpired where i didn't end up getting justice and then mm -hmm. i had been it had happened it, it had happened to i had been gang raped and then i had also my ex-boyfriend had broken into my house and he um had raped mm -hmm. me as well and so, and it was all of this, like, 
well, you were drinking. <laughs> oh, well, you guys were dating at one point, like, like it was my fault. And so yeah. the internalization of that and then society, you know, like, and that was the justice system saying that, let alone what society would say about it. And then I had a difficult time processing what had happened to me. It's very, very those are things that it's so hard to like get close yeah. to right yes so yeah. i had who am i going to talk to and every therapist right. that i had talked to, it's like oh i had been you know i went through this and this and this and now i've got a, a phenomenal therapist but back then awesome. it was like well you're carrying it really well or you're doing a good job you know like rooting for mm -hmm. me where i'm at right now but i never had any safe spaces to really process that stuff and i honestly was just uh -huh. so cry like i'll talk about it but it's not i don't typically talk about it like it's yeah. not yeah. usually something that i bring up but ever since mm -hmm. it came up that it just like came up and then it just kind of engulfed in yeah. that and I was like what did i just you know and i don't mind talking about it but then the next yeah. day i'm like regurgitating it and i was like uh -huh wow you yeah. know and so obviously yes it needed to come out of my mind yeah. um and mm -hmm. i get to be yeah. processing that and i've definitely done a lot of processing of that like awesome. i mean i have a very difficult time every day getting up what i put on looking around my surroundings even mm -hmm. to look somebody in the face or to smile at them or to be kind or whatever mm -hmm. because you know that's the thing with society or even the justice system it's like well you know were you dating them? Were you too nice to them? What were wow. you wearing? What did you look about? Like all of those kind of things. And so mm -hmm. I'm constantly working myself out yeah. of that protective, like yeah. you were talking about, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we, we shouldn't feel that we've done something to cause harm to us. Right. You know, and it's like, and like you said, even the shame of it, I already, I feel bad already. So you wanted me to have more guilt on top of it. That's that's right. not solving. That's not helping the situation at all. Not, I mean, what, at all. the only thing it takes for you know um, to be raped is to have a rapist. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's it. It's yeah. not what I wear. It's not what I say. It's not. It's not any of those things. Right. You know, and so yeah. when we do that to our, I mean, that is every single addict has. Mm -hmm trauma you are just i mean mm -hmm. we've got we've got um a, a brain and brain chemistry that affects a lot you know all of this right but if you talk to an addict they have trauma in their life like mm -hmm. some, some deep yeah. trauma be it yes. general trauma or whatever yeah there is trauma there and so we yeah. have to be to want to help each other heal you know yes and the main thing that I, I try to not say mm -hmm. is that you're really not feeling that way. I am feeling this way. Yeah. You can't tell me not to acknowledge my feelings. Right. You know, right. What do you mean? They're not real. They are real if I'm thinking that they're, they're real. You can help me process through them, but I try to make I, I try to make sure that I don't tell my sponsors, you're not really feeling that. Right. You're not going through that. You know, no, that's not, that didn't work for me. Yeah. And I try not to use that on another individual to tell you that your feelings aren't valid. You right. know, it's, no, that's not something that I, I agree with. Right. Well, like, I mean, we all know, we all need to vent. Mm -hmm. and just yes. Get and, and, you know, I had gotten to a point too where I couldn't even just vent to anybody because then I was getting the sympathy. Then I was, then they're looking at yeah. me, like, oh, yeah. she's going to, what I mean? And so I started to just like deal with my, just me and God because I, right. it, it wasn't helpful for, for me. But, you know, right. when you need to vent, it's just literally like word vomit, right? And so if the person. I'm not even missing. I'm not asking for advice. Right. Sometimes I just need you to listen. I don't want you to fix me. Yeah. And but my thing is I had to learn that who to vent with. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't want to tell you something and that you're gonna hold it against me and come back later. Yeah. You know, and I and that's why it took me a long time to trust. Oh because yeah, 
I told you something in confidence or I'm going through something and you bring it back to me. And it's like, yeah, I'm not the, I don't, you know, it, it hurts. Oh, when that happens. Is. Yeah. The, yeah. Those betrayals are very, you know, especially when you're already, you know, thinking you're in a safe space right. and then for the betrayals to happen is just. Oh. Yeah. 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 And it, it just hurts. Yeah, you know that I I confined in you and yeah. So I I try to remember not you know it it helps me become hopefully a a better person and a better listener mm -hmm. because I can remember in the past when people would call me and I thought they wanted my advice. Well, they didn't want my advice. They just wanted someone to listen. So now yes. Learn. I try to remember to say, especially to my sponsees, mm -hmm. are you calling to ask me what I would do in this situation? Or are you calling because you want me to listen? Yeah. Yeah. And those are really two really good things to ask, I think. Because sometimes oh. people just want someone to listen. Yes. Not to have you fix me because you can't. And, you and can't. if you think about it, too, you know, for uh, this is how I was. I was, bef I knew I was mad. So then I started mm -hmm. to process, why am I mad? And then, you know, which I have to do that because of my, my complex post-traumatic stress disorder to like, see, okay, like, well, where, where am I mad and why am I mad? And uh -huh. is it at this person? So, you know, like I do need to do that, but it got to uh -huh. a point where I was almost scripting what I was going to say to the person because yeah. I was afraid of how they were going to act and react towards me yeah. and did i say it right or i didn't say it right you know and how things that like would that. Drive me nuts <laughs> and it's like i just want to be like oh this made me so mad you know or i'm uh -huh. so overwhelmed you know it's just like and we're human you everybody feels yeah. that and they just need to yes. like get out, you know <laughs> yeah yeah I, everybody i think I, I try to remember that we none of us have the answers. We all just are seeking. Yes. You know, That's and when I, even in the 12 step rooms, I used to think in, in the beginning when I first came in, mm -hmm. that there was a secret something that eventually I would get. <laughs> yeah. And the longer I'm sober, so I've learned that. Yeah. It's not everybody's trying to, they trying to get there too, just like I am. Right. <laughs> they don't have the answers either, because if they had the answers, they wouldn't keep coming in there, right? Right. <laughs> so we we're all trying right. to make it. Right. I mean, that's the, an the answer is you, <laughs> me, yeah. having these conversations yeah. uh -huh. and having yeah. honesty and the vulnerability, <laughs> right? Yes. That's it right there. Because I used to think they knew, especially the old timers, I thought, oh, they know. They have the answers. They got the wisdom. And it's like, I look at them and I listen to what they're saying. And mm -hmm. they just, they're just saying basically the same thing that I'm saying. They're just saying it in a different way. And we're all just trying to make it in the long run. That's what we all trying to do, trying to find a little serenity. Yes. We all ever, we, and at the end of the day, every human needs serenity. And the way that the world yes. works is yes. not serenity, but I'm like, you know, like, how fast can you get it done? When are you going to get it done? You got to pay this bill, yes. pay more bills. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And just slow down and just yes. breathe and enjoy. So do you enjoy the journey, yeah. right? Right. Right. And I think I, I, I'm i not discrediting any of the old time or people who have been sober for, you know, you know, as long as you've been and passed, you know what I mean? But yeah. we are in a different generation in a different time yeah. where. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most. Oh, I've talked about this with someone today. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we wouldn't even be on here. No. Talking about sobriety, it's things have got to change, and they're going to change whether we want them or not. Right. We're not in control of the changes that's going to happen. They're going to, 
you you can go with the flow and you can stay where you are, but it's still gonna happen. Yes. And that's how I look at yeah. it. You know, yeah. they with uh people that are recovering and we're talking about it and we're saying we're here and if we can do it, you can do it. And you know, and we're recovering out loud. I love that. I told you earlier, I don't know who invented it, but I love it. And yeah. that's what I want to do. I want to recover out loud. And I want to shout it from the rooftop yeah. that if I can get sober, anybody can get sober. And that's what it's about. That part, that's what it's about. <laughs> if, if you and I can get sober, you know. Anybody can get sober, and I, I know, it, right? <laughs> you know, so and, and that's that's something that I've learned too is that there are some people who are in recovery who may not actually have been addicts; they uh -huh. were just abused substance, uh -huh. and so they uh -huh. really have that same struggle and fight that uh -huh. actual mm -hmm. addicts do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. I had to learn that. Okay, well, I can't really take what they're saying. You know, like what they're saying to you know because they're like oh well if you really wanted to get sober then you would have just done it and i'm like it don't work like that <laughs> they, the hard drinkers said that you know a hard drink is different from a real alcoholic so it's easy it's, for you to say that <laughs> right right and that's what i'm like no abuse is not the same as addiction it's, yes it, yes it's, it's just not <laughs> No, it's not. Yeah, they can put it down, you know, and I can put it down, but I can't. It won't stay down. <laughs> no. no, and I think about it, and you know, the, yeah. the, the I that too. Well, if you really let go, then you wouldn't think about it, and it's like that was my lifeline at one point. That was literally how I was able to survive a day, mm -hmm. you know. That, that yeah. was great. so for me to not, you know, and and that's the thing too is just keeping the humility while you're in your sobriety, no matter how many years you have. Because I don't think mm -hmm. anybody who truly is an addict and in, and in recovery ever forgets the darkness that we experience. Oh my God! I don't. I don't ever want to forget that. No, I, it, I don't think. It, I'm gonna, no, I don't want to forget that. Right. I can't. It's not going to leave, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that's, it's not going to, that's a pain that I need to remember. Right, right, right. Yeah, I need to remember because that was a thing when I was drugging and using, my mind was fogged up. Right. And once I got to the clarity, I was able to realize this is not normal the way I'm living. Right. But when I'm in the midst of that disease, it's normal to me. Oh. And it's oh, not, yeah. it's okay. And because I don't like feelings, as soon as the wind blew a certain way on me, I didn't like that. So I go back and I use and, and I drink. Right. But right. once I got some sobriety, I realized, you know, I've got to use these other tools when I feel like that. Yes. yes. Right. But it took a while to get there. It's easier yeah. to stay sober than it is to get sober. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, when yeah. I said every relapse, it was mm -hmm. so much harder to get yeah. sober again. It's just yeah. it, it, incredibly mm -hmm. difficult. But, I mean, I'll never forget, like, the despair and the destruction. Yeah. And it's so, yeah. um, you know, when we're walking with others who are in recovery, for, for you to act, act as if you never experienced that, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. you experienced it. If you didn't experience the depths of that stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm happy for you because like, you know, but it's the reality of addiction is that it is a very lonely and dissolute mm -hmm. and destitute place. It, there is, yes. you know, fighting demons off yeah. constantly. So, because we're trying to get to the spirit and we right. can And that's what it's about. Trying to right. get to the spirit of the sunshine, and we we don't know how to get there. Right, and, and if we can't, it's a lonely place. It is, and yeah. if we can't be honest with newcomers about if we're all just going to talk, if we're just going to only talk about, oh, you know, when you get it, you, know, you get sober, everything's like perfect, no, and everything's this. No, and no, no. It, it ain't, no, it's not. That's it not reality. Not. 
And we're honestly mm-hmm. pushing them away because we're not giving them any tools for where they're at. And we're not, yes. you know, like meeting them where they are at at that moment. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll know that's what it, we need at that time. Yeah. And I, I tell them it's not going to, everything's not going to be rainbows and butterflies. No. You're going to feel everything now. You don't have that drug or that alcohol to numb it. So now what do you do? You got to have the tools of the 12 step. You got to have other things to replace that, uh, replace that drug with, you know, whether it be an exercise or whether it be find something that you enjoy that you forgot that you like doing because you got to replace it with something. You definitely do. And I, I mean, and I would even call, I'm like, I'm just going to say caution in the sense of, being mindful that you are an addict. So like when I had uh-huh. first started, and we always obsessed, we overdo. Exactly. And so I got obsessed with my eating. I got obsessed uh-huh. with the way that I was working out, all of those yeah. things. And so yeah. then I started to have shame with when I wasn't eating properly. Uh-huh. So now, you know, uh-huh. that, that uh-huh. Yeah. kept happening. And so it's really about having, you know, like that, ba- like you definitely need something to replace it, but you need that yeah. balance. Silence. Your- Right. Yes. 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 And you work through that. Uh, Mr. Rob, I'm going to, we're going to close it down. Girl, wow. I can't believe we've been in here for an hour. I love chatting with you. (laughs) You are fun. (laughs) Ditto. This has been great. We're going to have to do this again. (laughs) Oh, we will. Most definitely. I um, thank you so much for I mean, I hit you up on um, Instagram, and I'm like, will you be, we, can I get you on here? And you're like, well, not this week, next week. I really appreciate it. For More sure. Than I love it. More than you This was a great, that we need, I, this is, this what we both need, honestly. I love I think being so. like yes. this. Yes, I love of this well you have a good night pretty lady and i'm going to be following you hey guys make sure you uh go to silver lining nation subscribe uh share and most of all guys stay sober and we'll talk to you next week yes. bye y'all bye, bye. bye honey